Welcome ladies and gents to another Payday 2 video. By popular demand, we're going to take a look at the Scarface character pack today, a DLC released back in 2016 that unfortunately is going to no longer be purchasable from October the 1st. Meaning if you guys want to pick it up, you have about 24 hours as of the release of this video to do exactly that. More information on how you could win a copy of the DLC at the end of the video. Anyway, with the DLC soon to be inaccessible, I want to take a look at all the content it brings with it and analyze it from a value standpoint and within the context of the Payday 2 meta. So without further ado, let's take a look at the man himself. Tony Scarface Montana is a Universal Pictures crossover character found in the 1983 crime film. He fits very nicely into the Payday gang as a Cuban cartel kingpin with a little bit of style. Seemingly in the game's canon, this is not the same Tony Montana as we know from the film who is said to have died back in the 80s, but instead it's essentially a Scarface impersonator following in his idol's footsteps and taking up his old rivalries. Irrespective, Scarface bears a striking resemblance to his original actor Al Pacino, even in his diminutive stature, but is voiced by Andre Sogliozzo. No stranger to the role, he voice acted the Cuban in 2006's Scarface The World Is Yours and so brings an absolutely stellar impersonation of Pacino's character in a very convincing performance. Fans of the film will love hearing some classic lines, but even as someone who's not invested in the franchise personally, this voice work and line variety really is second to none. In my opinion, he's the most well thought out and executed crossover character, even outdoing Jacket, who I also adore. It's okay, Control. I was just saying hello to my little friend, you know what I mean? <laughs> Tony's mask, which is a character pack unlock, is also brilliant. Instead of keeping things simple as Overkill did with Wick, they went all out with a unique design for the character which typifies his opulent style and devil may care attitude. A lot can also be said of its unique colour scheme and facial expression which conveys his personality at a glance. I think it would be a shame to miss out on this hugely underrated heister. Next up, let's discuss the weapons he brought with him, starting with the Little Friend, a totally unique AR which is viable even up to death sentence difficulty. At a glance, it looks like a simple, if high DPS assault rifle, falling in and around the DMR category. While it's got great handling stats, it does struggle with fairly appalling ammo reserves and a low pickup rate, meaning when used as a rifle, it has virtually no ammo sustainability. But that isn't the point of the Little Friend. I mean, the clue is in the name. Its very high DPS is actually a perfect pairing with the feature that makes it unique, the underbarrel M203 40mm grenade launcher. Yes, this is a noob tube in Payday 2, and yes, it's just as good as you'd imagine. It brings crowd control, has an easy to aim arc, and as a part of another weapon, won't struggle with high health targets such as those pesky dozers which normally shut down grenade launches. Even better, each grenade comes in at 1300 damage, meaning it falls in line with many of the other popular grenade launcher options such as the Compact 40 or GL40. It's a versatile monster which makes a case for best weapon in class from the assault rifle category, although it will take a little practice to master as switching between fire modes can be fiddly and ammo management can be a concern. Either way, it's a top tier weapon well worth trying out. The second weapon we get is not nearly as exciting as a melee weapon. It had the potential to be immensely cool, as the Lumberlei L2 is in fact a chainsaw. But in classic Payday fashion, Tony doesn't seem to have a clue how to actually wield the thing, so instead of tearing through waves of cops doom style, he just sort of whacks them with it. Which is okay, I suppose. Moving swiftly on, I want to talk about the best part of the DLC, which is saying something, the Kingpin Pert deck. But before I dive into one of the more daunting to understand Pert decks in the game, let's briefly talk builds. Here's the setup I'm using throughout the gameplay. It's a really fun one, combining the Kingpin Burt deck with a couple of weapons released in and around this DLC. Of course including the little friend. Credit where it's due though, I recently saw Kev killed rocking this setup and had to give a variant of it a go. What I love about this is picking up on the fairly evident ammo deficiencies of the little friend, we couple bullet storm and extra lead for truly explosive results. It's rare I bring ammo on heists these days, but here's an example where it's definitely worth it. In general though, when making a kingpin setup, aggression and DPS are key to properly play into its skill set. Explosives are the focus of my damage in this build, but you can just as easily use weapons like LMGs and auto pistols to a similar if maybe more controlled effect. Also, kingpin is quite build flexible, but most players suggest that the min max point for armor is 70, although I have seen people run suit kingpin to good effect. 
It is a health based deck after all, which means high concealment is on the menu if you want it. Now to get more out of this build, we need to properly understand Kingpin in all of its poorly worded nuance. Widely considered by the upper echelons of Payday players to be a deck second only to Stoic, Kingpin has all you need out of a perk deck. The general theme of it is health expansion and maintenance, being the first perk deck to come equipped with its own unique tool in the throwable slot, the Injector. This Injector can be used to heal for portions of incoming damage for 6 seconds, giving you just the survivability you need. You see, an incredibly intelligent and experienced player can virtually play through an entire heist without taking any health damage. They just use cover well, abuse bullseye headshots, and repeatedly armor gate any incoming shots. But when it comes to completing objectives and running out in the open, even these players need to be able to take damage occasionally. That's where you'll see some perk decks succeed and others fall down. Just to give you a couple of examples, Anarchist and Armourer have their total damage and vulnerability, Sicario has its smoke for perfect dodge, and Stoic has the hip flask to absorb and heal through large amounts of incoming damage. Kingpin's Injector carries exactly the same concept with it, giving you a window of extreme invulnerability where very few enemies can truly take you down. How does it work? Well, for the 6 seconds after use, you will heal for 75% of all incoming damage above half health, and 100% of that when hit below half health. Whilst that sounds like total invulnerability on paper, if the damage you take at any point exceeds the amount of health you actually have, this will not be healed and will result in you going down, so watch out for those Bronco Street Cops and Green Shotgun Dozers. But keep in mind, it has more to it than just that. When you use the injector, it works essentially like a taunt mechanic, focusing all nearby cops onto you as a target and giving your teams a 6 second grace window to reposition or get an objective done. This means it's a much better perk deck for when playing online, especially in pubs, than for solo play. The consumable itself is on a 30 second cooldown at base, which starts right after the injection, meaning it's more like a 24 second cooldown, which can be reduced even further by 1 second per kill, and for an additional second for every 50 health you heal when at full health. Keep in mind the tooltip explains this part of the deck incorrectly. I'd say on average, you're looking at about a 15 second cooldown for the Injector, which competes with the very powerful Stoic. In fact, we can go even further with the Injector and actually use it as a powerful healing tool, as any damage you take into your armor over those 6 seconds will actually be healed up. Meaning when paired with the ultimate armor gating tool, Bullseye, you can actually heal for quite ludicrous amounts when on higher difficulties. Which brings me to the greatest issue Kingpin has. It's an immense deck for experienced players on death sentence difficulty. But as you drop through the difficulties and cops start doing less burst damage, its effectiveness really wanes, and you'd likely be better with a more passively applying deck, such as the heal over time Grinder provides. Now remember, Kingpin also provides a ton of health, almost 500 when paired with partners in crime, so it's by no means a shabby perk deck even when you're not getting the full value out of the injector. But also consider solid game knowledge and fast reactions pair best with the skills Kingpin offers, so don't expect this to be a pick up and play deck like Rogue for instance. If you really know what you're doing, you'll be able to use that health pool aggressively to lower your next cooldown and keep the heat off your squad but I've seen many less experienced players tend to cower in a corner while they wait out a recharge, which I'd consider a mistake. Overall, as far as Kingpin is concerned, players placing it number 2 on their perk deck tier list are definitely not exaggerating. I personally believe that this is the deck with the highest skill ceiling in the game, and I'm still trying to understand some of its mechanics myself. If you want to hear from a player more experienced with Kingpin, do check out Carrot's video on the subject. He has a very well put together guide focused specifically on the intricacies of the perk deck, and he also grills my videos from time to time which I kinda rate. I think that if in an upcoming update there were nerfs to Stoic, Kingpin would immediately take up its mantle, so get ahead of the curve and learn how to use it now. That of course brings me to the point of this video. I think the Scarface character pack has some of the highest value content in the game, which you're about to lose access to. The little friend and Kingpin alone would be enough to earn a recommendation from me, but Tony is a top tier heister as well. I'm not entirely certain whether all of the Scarface DLC items will be no longer accessible for good if you don't buy now, but Tony absolutely will as the issue seems to stem from a licensing problem. From my point of view, it would be a shame to miss out on these incredibly strong and fun to use options, assuming they become completely inaccessible after September. I recommend picking them up now instead of taking that risk. The DLC is 30% off and is purchasable for roughly the next 24 hours, so it will be quick and decisive. It's rare I make a recommendation for a DLC this readily, 
But if you don't fancy paying yourself, why not join my Discord server to be in with a chance to win a Steam copy of the DLC completely free of charge. Link to that in the description below. As ever, thank you very much to my mean infamy patrons and above. If you want to join that infamous club to see yourself in the credits or get early access to my videos, check out my Patreon linked below. Thank you very much for watching this video, and I'll see you all very soon for the next one voted for by you.